GCC DT is coming up. This may be your final exam, I think, unless you're food tech tomorrow. So let's end as strong as we can. Now, DT is, to be completely honest, it's a really weird subject. And in some ways, it's a difficult subject, okay? I really struggle to revise for it because there's just so little online. So for DT, out of like every subject, I had to work things out the most myself. Now, you're lucky in a way because I'm about to tell you what I did. So you're going to get my advice. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you leave like. Now, DT may seem hard. It may seem strange, but it's not as long as you know some certain things. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. It may be a little bit longer. It may be a bit more technical, but I have so much advice that I want to get across to you guys that, yeah, make sure you listen to the end because you really want to end as strong as you absolutely can. So it may seem difficult, but trust me, it's not as bad as you think. Now, I've also put together a free DT exam help guide in the description. So if you click on the link and you put in your email, then you'll get that for free. So that should really help you because like I said, let's go as hard as we can for this final exam. Now, let me just talk to you a bit about the composition of the DT paper. It, I find it helpful to kind of break things down and break down the unknowns. So when I was revising for DT, one of the things I did was I looked through a lot of past papers. And when I did this, I basically noticed more and more that the same things come up. There's a pattern. The paper's not some crazy like alien paper. It's the same every single year. And you need to know the structure of your paper depending on your exam board. So for AQA, for example, we have a 20 mark section A, which is usually multiple choice. Section B is 30 marks and section B C is 50 marks. So know your exam layout very clearly. That's crucial. So then you can kind of work out what to do from there. Across all exam boards, though, maths makes up around 15% of your marks and science around 10%. So that's a quarter, that's 25% which you don't, which is other content, okay, that you will have learned. Now, when I say science, don't panic. It's not anything crazy like, um, I don't know, mitochondria and all that biology stuff. It, it's most likely going to be some physics type of thing, maybe momentum, we'll see. But I'll put, it's going to be in the free guide for more information. So like I said, make sure you download that for more information there. But the point is, make sure you go to the mathematical questions on DT. It, it can often be measurements, it can be strange shapes. You can still get trigonometry or Pythagoras with a triangle. So you have got to be alert and understand that maths could come up. Looking through past papers and seeing the maths questions will be useful because they usually come up again and again. It's not going to be anything crazy, but be aware that maths is going to be there. Now, again, there is going to be, for AQA at least, a 12 mark, 12 marks worth of questions on evaluating a product. Okay, I'll put a kind of photo up there. But this comes up every single paper. So what I did was I printed out loads of those evaluating kind of questions and I just did them loads and I looked at the mark scheme and I got good at those evaluating skills. So now you can see now we're starting to build up that this exam really isn't that bad, okay? 25% maths and science. We've got another 12% which is on those like evaluating a product. You've just got to get good at that. Now again, I'll put some stuff of this on the free guide, but you have you sometimes have to evaluate it based on different things like ergonomics. So make sure you know what that is, like sustainability. Make sure you're able to evaluate how good a product is based on different factors. Okay. Then there's an essay. There's usually a long essay question across every exam board. Just double check with your exam board. This is mainly for AQA, but it should this video will help for all exam boards. And there's a long essay question, which is eight marks. Now, the biggest mistake, I think it's eight to ten marks, but the biggest mistake students make is they just write like four sentences here. Okay, that's pointless. This exam, you have shed loads of time. I don't know why it's two hours. You have you will have time left over. So just give that essay everything you've got. Go into extra space. Like use the end of the paper if you need to. I literally spent like a good 30 minutes, 25 minutes on that essay question because I had the time. Why would you not really push for that? Do a paragraph and everything, an introduction, a conclusion, using those cat's words if you listen to my like geography and history advice. So go all out on the essay. There we go then. So that is 22% on essay and evaluation, another 25% on maths and science, 50% of the exam done. Okay, not to mention there's 10% of multiple choice questions. Now you're at 60%. So I hope you can see that there's a very clear path to achieving in DT. It's not a crazy difficult exam, but you do need to practice it. And that brings me on to my next part, which is spam questions. Okay, you've got to spam and just do loads of questions. So what I did in the production exam was I printed off loads of past papers. I went through them, I marked them, and I actually printed out loads of section A's, all of them. Okay, so all of the section A's, which for AQA at least is just 20 mark, and 10 of those are multiple choice because the multiple choice questions are often a bit weird, like you don't fully know it. 
The more of those you do, the better you're going to get. And that doesn't take long. Okay, like I said, you want to push for this exam. So I would be doing that. You can speed through a paper fairly quickly. So make sure you're doing lots of past questions. And at the very minimum, you're looking at loads of past papers. Just get up five on your computer or whatever. Look through them and just note down, what do you spot? What questions come up again? What's the same? Now, Seneca learning for DT is a little bit weak, but some parts of it are good. I'll put in the free guide what parts of Seneca you want to do, but some of it is worth it. So I would recommend doing some Seneca, but it's not the best. Some of the online resources just aren't the best for DT. Drawing questions again. So I knew that I was going to get tested on having to draw something. I think there's three different like things you need to be able to draw. Isometric drawings. I couldn't tell you the others, to be honest, but I'll put them, I'll put a photo up there and I'll put them in the uh, guide as well. So make sure you can do the drawings. And I also re recognise that you'll get marks in these drawings for just doing really basic stuff. So if you draw like a square and it's asking you to draw a pencil sharpener, which was my example in my year, and I, you draw a square, you'll get one mark. So they're usually five mark questions, but you can get three marks for just drawing like a 3D shape. So you don't need perfection here. At nine, I think it depends on your coursework, to be fair. But for me, I knew I had to aim for like 85 and upwards for a nine. So I knew I wanted to do really well, but I could afford to drop some marks. And I also knew that. So final thing then, DT is a common sense exam. Yeah, a lot of it is common sense. So whatever happens, don't even think blank. Just put what you know. You can use real life examples, okay? If it's asking you to talk about a successful business or example of prototyping, you could just talk about, I don't know, Apple, Dyson, all that type of stuff. So use what you know to not leave anything blank. Most people have some basic knowledge of DT, which can actually be quite helpful. Like if it asks you, I don't know, why is this plastic suitable for this? Just guess. That's what I did. It, like, it actually happened in the exam. It said, why is this plastic? I couldn't even name it. It was one of those really long ones. It said, why is this plastic useful for a water bottle? I just guessed. I said, I said something like it's useful because it's waterproof and it's useful because it's durable or something. So you can just guess this type of stuff, yeah, because you might as well. Obviously, it's going to be waterproof for a water bottle. But I knew if I put that, I'd probably get a mark. So to conclude, this exam is going to be fine. What you need to do is, first of all, download the information that I have. OK, that's designed to help you and it's free. So download that as my advice. Then you need to look through loads of past papers. You need to find out which areas you need to target the most. Maybe have a look at the maths first. Maybe make sure you're good at the evaluation. And you just break it down into easy things and get good at each individual one. You may have to do a little bit of learning because you will have to detail like you need to pick like wood or metal or whatever it is and make sure you're good at those projects. So you need to know how to like sand wood or whatever and able to describe that. So learn a thing or two with Seneca. That's going to be helpful for that. And then with practice, you're going to get loads of the marks. OK, I've really I've pretty much broken down everything you need to do to get the top grades in that exam. It's a common sense exam. It's going to be fine. Write as much as you can. Keep it clear. And yeah, end as strong as you can. Now, thank you. Ever. I just want to say a big thank you. This is the last GCSE video that I'm going to be doing for this year for 2025. So it's been I've re I'm just really proud of like how well everyone's done and also the support that you guys have given me has been amazing. So please do let me know how your results go. Please stay subscribed as well because I'm going to be doing lots of A-level videos and stuff. I'll give you guys a rest though. And yeah, well done. GCSEs are going to be over and you're going to finish as strong as you possibly can. So yeah, you can go into results day with confidence. And thank you everyone so much for watching in these past few months.